Hey, it's Chris. Today, I want to give you a long-term review of the original Apple Watch Ultra. Now, I already did a review of the more recent version, so you can check the channel if that's what you're mostly interested in. But here, I want to focus on Apple's most rugged watch in the long haul. How does it treat you in terms of battery life? How's the screen holding up? What's the build quality like? Is this thing all scratched up after all this time? We're going to hit all of that stuff, but I also just want to mention, of course, I made plain in my original review. I'm not going to the top of Mount Everest. I'm not swimming with the sharks next week. For me, when I'm using this, I'm going about my everyday adventures. And the reason that I was attracted to it over the quote unquote normal Apple Watch is really the toughness. I still want that even in my everyday adventures, the battery life. I really wanted an upgrade in that department and the brighter screen. So let me just get this right out of the way. I'm not using the extra loud siren. You know, the GPS means very little to me personally. Yes, before the iPhone Pro got it, this had the action button. And you know what? I don't really use it except on accident when it bothers me and gets in the way. That's what I've discovered about that over time. I'm not using any particularly sporty bands with it. This is actually an alligator skin band that some company sent me to review several years and I just kind of like how it looks. So it's kind of more of a classy upscale look on this rugged watch. But you know what? It works for me. I like it. It's different. And actually, that's one of the key things that I've said over and over again, as I've talked about the Apple Watch Ultra on this channel, is that I like how different the design is. It looks different than every other Apple Watch that's come before. You go out in public and there's Apple Watches on almost every wrist, it feels like. I know it's not really the case, but they're everywhere. It's just saturated the public space with Apple Watches. So as long as that was gonna be the case, and as long as I still wanted to wear an Apple Watch, then I wanted something that at least had a little bit of personality outside of just a different colored band. All right, so ruggedness. Let's talk about how this thing, which is supposed to be really tough, has held up over time. I'm looking at it right here, and you know what? To the naked eye in this dim lighting in the studio, I don't really notice anything, you know, like major with it. But as soon as I start inspecting it a little bit closer, it does have some dings, some scrapes, some scratches, obvious wear, mostly around the corners. In fact, I would say basically exclusively around the corners, but you know what it's not? It's not broken. <laughs> so that's a big deal. My previous Apple watches did suffer from things like scratches on the screen. I don't have any scratches on the screen here. That really bothered me in the past because you would you know, flick around on the screen and your nail would like catch on a groove or something. I hate that on the iPhone too. And that's not happening here at all. The screen is perfectly protected because of this extra lip around here. It's a tank, and that makes sense. It was designed for smashing into the rock face on your way to the top of Everest and surviving. You know, for me though, that usually equates to knocking into stuff in the home gym. I've had some of my Apple gear, my Apple watches in the past, get pretty banged up on the side of a treadmill or something. I mentioned the display being very durable. Let's talk a little bit more about the display though. It is a brighter display, which makes it more visible technically in the sunlight. Although when I was on the website and I was ordering this in the first place, I was like, that's going to be a really big deal. You know, I want to be able to see this even when I'm outside. Well, guess what? Practically speaking, I basically never noticed that or have cared, you know, like it was a nice thing to mention as a marketing bullet point. But in reality, I don't know that that's made really a huge difference. What has been nice though, what has made a difference when it comes to the display is the bigger size. When you're doing something like tapping the little buttons on the calculator or something and you calculate a tip, for instance, yeah, I mean, it's nice to be able to tap stuff and not miss tap. And that is something that happened, I would say more on my older Apple watches, the smaller versions, the normal Apple watches. So I've actually really enjoyed the bigger screen size. That's something I have noticed. In terms of exclusive watch faces, I haven't made a lot of use out of any of the exclusives, even when the screen gets red, so that if you're doing astrophotography, it's not gonna mess with your eyesight at night, or if you're like a Navy SEAL and you need to sneak up and you can't be putting out a bunch of light, you know, I never use that. It's cool, it's neat, it makes for cool marketing, but I never actually use it. That said, I do use the flashlight feature on here. You would think that's ridiculous. I know you got your phone with you a lot of times, but sometimes at night I'm going around in the basement and instead of just turning on all the lights, I can just turn on my flashlight here. And because this thing gets really bright, super bright, the flashlight gets extra bright too. And so that actually has been very useful. I appreciate that. You might be surprised to find out that this is a pretty good device for productivity, which leads me to this amazing fact. 
I happen to have a productivity course, which you can check out. It's called Learning to Be Productive. It's made specifically for Apple users to help you get more done in less time in the Apple ecosystem with less burnout. It's linked up down below. Ah, and that brings us to battery life. Probably the worst feature about the Apple Watch in general and the Apple Watch Ultra in particular because it's the Ultra. And I gotta say, after having it for this long, I get a little bit annoyed with having to charge it as frequently as I do. Now, do I have to charge it every day? Technically, I don't always, but I have to charge it frequently enough that it's annoying. Like, I'll see that it's on low power mode all of a sudden, and I'm like, how did that happen? This is the Apple Watch Ultra. And it just turns out Apple Watches aren't ready yet to give you a full week of battery. And it's one of the worst parts of having an Apple Watch, especially a really expensive one, like the Apple Watch Ultra. You would like to have all week battery life. Now, everything's a trade-off. You get a ton of features that the smartwatches that have all week battery life don't have, but then you don't have all week battery life. So I guess you just have to optimize for what's gonna work best for you. Now, even though I wish the battery life was better than it is, it's not a deal killer for me. I don't say I regret having the Apple Watch Ultra. Certainly it's better than what I would get with a normal Apple Watch. So, you know, I can't really complain there, but if there was one thing that I could improve about the Apple Watch Ultra, that would be it. Especially because one thing I like to do with the Apple Watch Ultra is because it's such a nice Apple Watch, it's the best Apple Watch, I like to grab that, grab my AirPods, and disconnect from my phone. It's like the ultimate focus mode. And so that was one of my original intentions with getting this higher end Apple Watch. And it has been great for that, especially because you can get the LTE, obviously. You don't really miss out on all that much, except you think that you are. It's FOMO, right? When you're disconnected from social media, but you get your podcasts, you get your Audible. Actually, there's a web browser on here. You can get a web browser if you absolutely must check the internet. I'm just gonna briefly glance over the chip in here. There's a nice chip in here, and what that means is no slowdowns, no glitchiness, no responsiveness issues. And honestly, on some of my older Apple Watches, there were times where I faced some of that, especially with some software updates. But here, that hasn't been an issue because it's just that fast. Now that brings us to the health and fitness tracking. A lot of people buy this just for the health and fitness tracking. And while I'm not that person, I still do use this when I'm working out. And when I hit the gym, it's with Fitness AI, and that does have an Apple Watch app. In terms of the built-in sensors and the health tracking that comes just straight out of Apple, yeah, I mean, that's cool. I turn off the stand rem reminders. I win an award every now and then without even realizing it without even trying <laughs> from Apple. And, you know, so does it motivate me more than a regular Apple Watch or having no Apple Watch? I wouldn't say more. Um, I say it's as effective as my other Apple Watches at trying to motivate me to be more active. One thing I wanna talk a little bit about is just the wearability and comfort. I know a lot of people are like, is that just too big of a watch for me personally? I, I don't know, would I like that? And what I have to say about that is it doesn't feel any less comfortable to me than a regular Apple Watch. It is a big watch. And sometimes I don't realize that when I'm just looking at it on my wrist myself personally. But when I see a video that I've taken of it, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, that looks pretty big on the wrist, you know, because it is, it's a big boy. But that hasn't really bothered me. I do feel like sometimes though, I end up hitting because of the monster size, this button over here on the side and accidentally activating it. If I try to use this one-handed also, sometimes it'll activate the action button on the back. So there are times when it feels a little bit clunky, but that's gotta be like 0.05% of the time, right? Basically never. I will say it's comfortable enough that I often wear it to bed. That might amaze some of you out there and other people are like, yeah, so I do that all the time, but it's big and it doesn't really get in my way. I mean, I notice it, but it also doesn't impact my sleep. So I'm just saying, if you're trying to track your sleep with this, I would say it's definitely doable. Some people are, are gonna like it, some people aren't. That's just a matter of personal preference, but I definitely do track my sleep with it and have no issues. This is an Apple device. It's part of an ecosystem. And so how does it work with all the other devices? It should be a plus, it should be a benefit to be able to slide yet another device into an ecosystem if you built it out. iPhone, AirPods, your Mac, you know, HomeKit, all of that stuff. But I think the downfall for this one, this particular, the original, is the Siri integration. 
So I still get some of that off-board Siri processing. The new one did a lot to fix this, where I'll ask Siri to do something, make a reminder even, something really simple, and it just hangs. And then it says it can't hear me or didn't get it right or something went wrong. And that's really frustrating, and that happened quite a bit. So that's something that the newer Ultra actually did fix, which sort of leads me to talking about the microphone and the speakers. I like to leave my iPhone, and it's cool to be able to dictate to this, go on a walk or something. If you want to do that and dictate or take a phone call, maybe you forgot the AirPods, the better speakers here versus a normal Apple Watch, they actually do make a difference every now and then, and you will actually notice it. Additionally, the few times when I have taken a phone call on here, when I didn't have anything else available, or maybe I just wanted to, I knew it was going to be a quick call, I have tested, I've said, you know, do I sound weird to you? Can you hear me okay? And people seem to be pretty impressed, pretty happy, don't notice any difference. They don't know that I'm talking on an Apple Watch, and that's because the microphone quality here is pretty good. So, value for the money. Let me just put it this way. Do I regret buying it, and would I buy it again? No, I don't, and yes, I would. I've been very happy with it. It's been a really solid performer that could use a few tweaks, some of which got adjusted and updated with the latest version of the Apple Watch Ultra, which really that's all that the latest version did, make a few minor tweaks, some quality of life improvements, nothing majorly different. So my final word on the subject today is that a lot of Apple gear is stuff that you can buy and use longer than you could some of the competition. I think this is one of the best examples so far for my personal testing and usage of that in action in the Apple ecosystem. This is a solid, admittedly rugged, in looks and in use device, and it hasn't let me down. All right, thanks for hanging out today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I've got some more long-term reviews coming soon. I know there's some more iPads getting announced here probably soon. I don't know that for a fact, but I suspect. Got WWDC coming up. So if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.